When I say the word robot, a really specific image probably comes to your mind. But did you know the idea of a robot dates back as early as ancient Greece? Or that during the Renaissance, da Vinci was working on plans for a robot knight? A lot of our ideas about robots come from old television and movies like Transformers, Star Wars, and WALL-E, and especially old 1950s B-movies. But what if we could completely change the idea of a robot and move away from this image of an automaton? What would that look like? Well, today we're gonna find out. This is the Oregon State Robotics Lab. Here, my fellow students are working on the cutting edge of robotics technology, making robots that can walk, fly, and crawl. If I'm gonna find a robot of a different kind anywhere, it's gonna be here. This is Chloe Fleming. Hi, AJ. Hi, Chloe. Chloe's studying soft robotics here at Oregon State University. So, Chloe, what is a soft robot? That's a great question, AJ. A soft robot is a robot made of a deformable material like plastic, rubber, or fabric. Unlike conventional robots that require joints with multiple parts to actuate and move, a soft robot can achieve the same motion with a single continuous part. This is done by controlling the material properties of the soft robot's body. One side of the soft actuator is stiffer than the other, and because of this, when the material is stressed, such as when the air pressure inside it is increased, the less stiff side expands and pushes on the stiff side, causing it to bend. When this happens, the stiff side feels a compressive stress, while the less stiff side feels a tensile stress. As engineers, we can use this difference in stresses to cause the robot to move in a specific direction. So Chloe, these soft robots remind me a lot of a snake or a worm. That's a good point, AJ. And the cool thing about that is that it means we can use soft robots to actually recreate some of the locomotion strategies of animals like snakes or worms. So how does a snake move? Snakes, because they don't have legs, actually have to move by changing the shapes of their bodies. Okay. So one way that a snake might slither is by moving into the shape of a C, and then an S, and then a backward C. And it will repeat this and actually be able to propel, propel itself forward. So it goes through a C, yes. an S, mm -hmm. and a backward C. Yes. How does it use those three shapes to move forward? So. It actually is creating friction between its scales and the ground. So it will lift part of its body off the ground in the process of curving and actually be able to push itself forward. So it's making friction at those curved points. So here, 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 and here. Yes. Wow, that's really cool. So you've made a robot like this. Do you have a prototype that we can check out? I do, in fact, and we can head down to the lab to go see it. Wow, fantastic. Let's check it out. Wow, that was a really fast way to travel. I know, right? I only ever travel by comical scene change. So what do you what do you have laid out here? Well, AJ, this is our soft snake robot. So how does it work? When I pressurize it with air, it will move and change the shape of its body into C shapes and S shapes and actually propel itself forward like a real snake. Oh, that's awesome. Can we take a look and can you show me how it goes? Sure. So I see it's moving through an S and there's a C. And another, and another S. So when it does this, it's putting friction down at the apex of each curve into the millet, right? Right, and I'm glad that you brought up friction. So actually, that's friction is the reason why we have it moving in this bird seed instead of just on land. So real snakes actually have scales, and those scales are what it uses to generate friction against the surface that it moves on. Okay. This snake doesn't have scales. So in order to simulate that friction, we need to put it in this sort of granular medium so that it has more resistance side to side than back and forth. And that way it's actually able to get enough traction to move forward. So this is really cool. You made a robot that can mimic a snake and move forward through this millet bed. But can it do anything else? Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. This one is an aspiring artist. Oh, he even has a little beret, just like all artists do. All right, so what do we do to get him to paint? Let me show you how. Okay.
Wow, Chloe, this is amazing. Thank you so much for teaching me about this today. Oh, of course. Thanks for stopping by. Come by again sometime. I'll show you around. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again. Today, we learned about soft robotics, and the soft robot can be made out of fabric, plastic, or rubber, and used for a whole range of interesting applications, like imitating the motion of a snake. We also learned that snakes propel themselves forward by transitioning between a C shape, an S shape, and a backward C shape, and by making friction at the main points in those curves. By doing this, they can create locomotion and push themselves forward. You can make your own soft robot at home with a little bit of rubber, a big pen, and some yarn. In this case, I made a soft robot grabber. There's a link in the description with all the details and directions on how you can make your own soft robot at home. And if you live in Benton County, Oregon, you can come to the Corvallis Benton County Public Library and pick up your own kit to make a soft robot for free. Thanks for watching, and remember, like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. I am a robot.